This is Super Yacht News with the Sysman. Hi, welcome back to the channel. So if you look to my left here, you can see Motor Yacht Galactica Supernova. If you've been watching since the start of the sanctions, you'll remember this vessel disappeared on the 2nd of March. It was just after the invasion of Ukraine. The vessel left Tivat in Montenegro, uh, switched off her AIS and poof, just vanished. Well, because of you wonderful people, we have been able to track this vessel uh, all the way to Turkey. And we know that the vessel is now currently sat in Fethayi uh, Bay. Uh, sorry about the pronunciation of it, it's not very good. Um, so we know that the vessel, as of a week ago, these photos were taken a week ago, and we know that this vessel is in that location. So the vessel has not been seen on AIS for seven months now. So if you're in that bay, by the way, because uh, obviously this is a week old, if you're in that bay and you can see that yacht, uh, please be sure to get in touch and let us know if the vessel is still there. All right, so we'll move on to the next thing now. Uh, Moti yacht Eleonora E, the replica 1900 sailing yacht. She was unfortunately hit by that search and rescue vessel uh, months ago now. It was like four months ago now in Tarragona Marina and big hole in the side and the vessel sank. You all know the story now, I think. Um, that vessel was raised at the end of last week, as we showed you in the in the previous videos, by um, fixing internally the hole in the side of the ship. They raised the vessel on airbags and then they pumped out the water. Well, today the vessel was moved, finally moved, across the marina to a shipyard on the other side of the marina, about 800 meters away. Quite an interesting sight, isn't it, to see that yacht being pulled across. There was a small tug pulled it across the marina, but it almost looks like it's a ghost ship that's just been missing for 100 years and it's just sailed back into that marina. Quite a spooky uh, sight to behold there. So the vessel's now in the shipyard and uh, apparently uh, insurance people are there looking at the vessel. No doubt trying to assess whether or not that can be repaired. Let's hope it can be. I'm not sure whether it will. I, I said in the previous video that I was hopeful, um, but like I said, I'm not an expert on uh, on that kind of thing. Um, but they will be able to establish whether that hull is too damaged or not, because uh, it might be, it might have had some structural damage which can't be repaired. I don't know, but we'll find out uh, in due course. All right, we'll move on. Um, the main story today: motor yacht Dilbar. As you'll remember, we tracked this massive yacht from. Uh, Hamburg to Bremen and the vessel sat outside Bremen's facility over the weekend well up until uh, yesterday since then the yacht has been loaded onto a floating dry dock and then it was towed to Bernay now in the previous video we said it was going to go somewhere else first but looks like they just took it straight to Bernay which is closer than the other location they were planning to go to apparently Lursen has a long-term uh, storage facility here but the yacht, as you can see here, the yacht, this footage, by the way, was taken by one of our subscribers uh, who wants to remain anonymous. Subscribers sent that footage into us and uh, you can see that the yacht is, is being transported by tugs on that floating dry dock, which makes it much easier for them to move around, I suppose. What's interesting about it being in this floating dry dock is it means that they can continue to work on the vessel, right? Now... I say continue to work because when the owner of the vessel was sanctioned, all work on that vessel stopped, all the workers had to down tools, the crew were dismissed, the management companies uh, dismissed them as a customer because they couldn't work for them under the sanctions, and Lurson had to hire a crew of five people to look after the vessel living locally in Hamburg and then coming in daily. And like I said, all work was supposed to have stopped. Now, about a month, six weeks ago, we, we saw the tarpaulin start to come off the yacht. And we contacted Lurs and we said, what's going on with the yacht? I thought you weren't allowed to work on it. And their reply was, effectively, we are working on it to make it safe. Now, that is a vague statement in itself. But um, what making it safe, we're not quite sure what that means. Now, we're at the time of the, of the sanctions, the yacht had... The propellers had been removed and the shafts had been removed and there was an open uh, hole in the, in the bottom of the ship where those shafts had been taken out, right? So you couldn't float that vessel. And the story that we heard is that they were going to plug those holes, make it watertight, so the vessel could be put back in the water and towed to Bremen. However, 
You can clearly see that the yacht has the propellers and therefore the shafts back, uh, installed back onto the vessel. You know, what, how is this happening when, on a vessel that has been sanctioned? Now, in the previous video, I talked about the, the possibility of uh, the ownership changing hands uh, possible, you know, because of the one of the sisters has been removed from the sanctions list. And a lot of people said it's not possible to do that. And it may not be possible, but something's happening here. There's work being carried out. They can, I suppose, Lurston could argue that to make the vessel safe, they had to put those shafts and propellers back on, on that vessel. But, you know, that, that's an, it's a very interesting uh, development, isn't it? And also in that floating dry dock, as you can see from the one across the water there, you can see it can be completely closed. Um, so now, now it's outside of the city and it's in this enclosed floating dry dock. If any work's going to happen, this is a good spot to do it because it is a, a quiet spot in comparison to Hamburg. Anyway, we've contacted Les and asked them uh, how come they were able to put the propellers and the shafts back in, but we haven't yet had a reply. Haven't given them an awful lot of time to reply. I'm sure they will. They always replied to every other uh, message that we've sent to them. So we will bring that in a future video. All right, I'm going to leave it there. If you've got any information about this story or any other stories we mentioned today or stories that we haven't mentioned, please get in touch using the normal fashion. You can get us on the About page of the YouTube channel. You can get us on Instagram, on Facebook Messenger, and you can get us on Threema. Please be sure to like this video, hit that subscribe button, and hit the bell for future notifications. All right, guys, I'll catch up with you soon. Bye-bye.